Okay, we're continuing with projectile motion. So here in the textbook, it says, this is really what we're trying to do here. Knowing how to decompose vectors into components allows us to separate motion in a plane into two one-dimensional problems. That's what we've been trying to do here, right? We saw we, had, we have the motion of a projectile, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate it into two one-dimensional problems. So I don't think I was that clear. Actually, I don't think I mentioned it at all. If you look at the motion in the horizontal direction, the velocity is constant. This particle is just moving at a constant velocity. So you throw it or it's a, some, you, you shoot it off at a, this initial velocity. And whatever that horizontal component was of that initial velocity, it just keeps moving at that velocity. But what happens to the vertical component? Well, the vertical component is exactly the same as... Um, where's my mouse now? Where is it? Oh, there we go. Okay. It's exactly the same as a ball just simply being thrown up, slowing down, stopping, and then coming down. Right? If you just looked at the vertical component, that's what it would be. Okay. Now, what are the equations we, uh, we use to solve um, velocities, displacements, things like that? What are the... Uh, what are the equations? So, <clears throat> remember from, is it chapter 3? Sorry, it's, it seems like a million years ago. Remember these equations for um, motion along a straight line. Remember these ones. Velocity final is velocity initial plus, what was it? A, acceleration, times time. All of this was for constant acceleration, if you recall. These equations were for constant acceleration. So there's the one. Remember, this is motion along a straight line. Then we had x final is x initial plus velocity initial times time uh, plus half a t squared. And then we also had v final squared is v initial squared plus 2 acceleration times delta x. So we had these three guys. They're all based on constant acceleration. But now what we want to do with projectile motion, again, is we want to break it up into its x motion and its y motion. And we want to apply these three equations in the x and the y. So let's look at the x. Remember the x direction, acceleration is ax equals 0, which means the velocity is constant. So let's take this one and let's apply it in the x direction. So we've got velocity in the x final is velocity in the x initial, but the acceleration is zero. So that's it. That's your equation. So my final velocity equals my initial velocity. Okay? What about this guy? Well, We've got x final is equal to x initial plus vx initial times time and the acceleration is zero, so that's that. And then if you look at the third equation, you'll see that this is the same as this one. This equation becomes this. So now we've got two equations, or let's call it two bits of information for motion in the x direction. This bit of information simply just tells us that the velocity is constant. And this one, if we, um, if we look at this one, it's basically delta x is vx initial times time. So this is how, how far, how far this guy went, delta x, from this point to that point. That's your delta x. It's also called your range. So if you, if, you, if you shoot it and you calculate your range, then this, this equation is where we want to find that information. Now what about y, the y direction? Remember what we said is that the y direction is as if you're just shooting a ball up, slows down, and then it comes back down again. Let's apply this in the y direction. We're going to have vy final equals vy initial. 
minus gt, because remember the acceleration in the y is minus g, minus g. It's the only acceleration on this particle. It's the only acceleration. Okay? Then, what about this guy? Well, the x's have to change into y's because we're looking now in the y direction. So y final, y final equals y initial plus vy initial times time minus half gt squared. Um, so let's just consider this. Th this equation will allow us to find velocity information as a function of time, right? Initial velocity or final velocity, okay? This function will allow us to find pos vertical position information as a function of time. So let's put it like this. This is velocity in, in the y as a function of time, this one. And this one, let's do, it's actually like that. This one is a vertical position as a function of time. Then if you do look at this one, you're going to get velocity in the y final squared, velocity in the y initial squared, minus 2g, Right, the min G A is minus G, so that's where the minus comes from, delta X. And so this is also, again, you could say it is velocity in, in the Y information, but now as a function of position, as a function of position, or even as a function of displacement. Okay? And then this one I didn't mention, that one is the X position as a function of time. Okay. Alrighty. I think that's okay for now. Let me go back to the textbook. See if there's anything else that I want to talk about here. So the other thing is, remember guys, if at any point, so, but I'll, I'll come back to this now. That's where these equations come from. 10, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Go and look at this and this, this, and this, and see how we derive them. That's these, you'll see that these are identical. Okay? So the point is, if we want to consider motion in the vertical direction, we've got these three equations. Motion in the horizontal, we've got these. Really one equation. Okay? One equation. But this two bits of information. Um, so now, at any point, remember, at any point, if we wanted to look at the velocity there, remember the velocity there would be tangent to the curve, and you would have your x velocity and your y velocity. If you wanted to find the angle, we would just simply say tan theta is the y component divided by the horizontal component. Okay. All right. See you in the next one.